I don't know anything about the public-private partnerships that may or may not be going on, but in, in terms of retraining and opportunities there, I think that those are, are, are clearly uh, possible and, and, and worthy of, of pursuit. In our energy bill, we do have you know, provisions um, related to, to workforce training, and workforce training also means retraining from wherever you have been to, uh, to, to wherever we might have you go with those next, uh, th that next evolution of, of energy jobs. So I do think that there are opportunities there. It's, it's not a, it, sorry. No, go ahead, Jeff. It, It's not a large uh, absolute number. Uh, if you take coal jobs, call it 60 to 70,000, and then let's say half are East Coast and half are Powder River Basin or West. And uh, so I think given the small numbers, it's manageable. Um, and I think we're looking at pensions uh, being uh, guaranteed uh, through, uh, I know Trump's working on that, uh, the president, excuse me, the president's working on that. Um, but you also have to think about the coal workers that are working in the plants themselves, and it's still 30, 33% of our grid. Uh, and you have to think about the whole sort of coal ecosystem. And you also have to think about the fact that uh, coal drives most of the power in the world, especially in Southeast Asia. Uh, and for China to write off all their coal plants, when people think about a renewables future, that would be a $5 trillion write down. I don't think that's realistic. So again, back to the economic opportunity. Uh, carbon capture is real and works where, the, where, where you can pump it into the ground and enhance oil. It works, it can work economically. We can win there. We're not going to win there if we cut the office of fuel energy by, uh, fossil fuel energy by, uh, you know, 70 percent. Not going to win. China has got those facilities up and testing now. They're going to win. Uh, we'll lose the jobs and we'll lose the export opportunities.